Hey there guys, we've now got the data for Blood Dancer Elispirus and it seems like Elispirus is kind of like Laswell in GAP. I guess every single time we get an Elispirus unit on Global, she's just going to be unfortunate. So yeah, we have the unit data. Let's take a look at the unit. So first of all, her categories are as expected. Um, Chaos, Clash of Wills, Support, Clash of Wills, Brave XBS Breaker, Dark, and she has the Bonds category. The Bonds category is one of those kind of whatever categories. It's like fan service units, fan favorite units, etc. Not really a thing because there's no good leader for that, so not really relevant. Um, as far as her stats go, they're fine. Stats are no big deal. Uh, she does have decent resistances across the board. That's certainly nice, etc. She has decent equipment access. She can use helms. And that's about where the good stuff stops. Then we get into her kit. Oh my lord, what is this kit? Okay, so let's just go through her stuff. So she's got triple cast. She's got some low damage support chaining, absolute mirror, and bolting strike. Um, she's also got uh, dark and ice imbue and amplify. And it does auto cast a 140 imperil every single turn, which is convenient. Convenient. It's only 140, but it's nice. Also, by the way, you see these amplifies 50% to dark and 40% to ice. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So while units like, you know, Red-Eyed Saul, uh, Blades of Black Flame Reagan, etc., you know, all the modern breaker units going forward as well, like, you know, Galoof, etc., um, they have 150 amplifies. Not Ella Spiris. No, she's going to be stuck with the 50, which is like nothing in today's game. Like nothing. Her damage is below garbage below garbage her damage i'll show you the calculations in a minute but yeah part of the reason is she doesn't have an amplify other than this this terrible 50 only there we go so she can fill a morale gauge a little bit 2500 on a five turn cooldown which is basically like 500 a turn kind of like you know ling's dance of invigoration or whatever it's called etc um she has a uh basically a worse version a worse version of Kaito and Magnus's cooldown. You know, Kaito has crashing waves. Um, not, what did I say? Kaito and someone? Anyway, Kaito and Rikt, I meant to say. Um, so Kaito has crashing waves. Rikt has, I forget what his is called. It's the same thing. It auto casts a dispel and a break every single turn for three turns. Um, not Ella Spears. So hers is a perfect dispel one time. One time. And then, now to be fair, it does auto-cast um, the break and the weapon in peril every turn until she dies, which is nice. That's convenient, but it doesn't perfect dispel on turn two or three like we really love, you know, Kaito and Rick to be doing. So we're going backwards yet again. Not to mention, this is a low-tier break, 85%. Kaito's is 88, Rick's is 87, Elispirus, 85 so we're just like going so far backwards in power level for whatever reason. I don't understand this. I don't understand this at all. But yeah, so we're going way backwards in power level. Here's her Magnus abilities. So the silver lining, it is an 89%. But of course, for whatever reason, it's got to be worse than every other unit in the game. So we've got 89% defensive spirit break, only a two turn duration. Why is every single 89 defense and spirit break Magnus out there a three turn duration, except Ella Spiris? Why does hers have to be only a two turn duration? Now you might be saying, oh, but hers is three times per battle, which is great. We only really care about this for one turn in the battle. All that matters is the kill term. And being a two turn duration means you have less flexibility for setting up. So, for example, if you wanted to give her an Amplify card because, um, you know, you want to give her an Amplify uh, that's not external. So, for example, let's say we're going to give her, like, the, what's it called? The, the, um, 
the Hero of Grand Shelt card to give a 100 Amplify over three turns. Well, you cast that on turn two, then on turn three, you maybe you want to do something like a, um, you know, Tyvis' Spirit or uh, Reagan the Returns modifier buff, etc., to try to give her a little bit more freaking damage. And then on turn four, you burst. Well, guess what? This is worn off. This is worn off because every other freaking unit, like Tulian, Laguna, every unit going forward, the break is three turn duration, which is effectively four turn duration. Not Elispirus. We got to make it worse. We got to make global units worse these days. So therefore, hers is only a two turn duration. You know, we can use it more often, but two turns is really inflexible for setting up your Dark Visions burst turn. Then, of course, we have another 89 um, Magnus for attack and magic. You know, breaking attack and magic is relatively minor, um, you know, at high tier. Obviously, higher is better, but uh, for attack and magic breaks, tanks are so powerful these days, 80% is good enough um, outside of Clash of Wills. In Clash of Wills, where bosses actually hurt, um, you know, more is better, but it doesn't matter because Clash of Wills breaks don't really matter in the first place because they have the passive stats. So, yeah, and then accuracy down, convenient. Only two turns, only two turns, because why would it be three? We have to, we have to do things goofy. And, and there it is. That's the kit. That's the kit. So, we don't have Amplify. We don't have cool utility like Killers, AoE Imbues. We don't have anything like Mirage for the party. We've got nothing in this kit. This kit is barren. So, we've got some basically irrelevant chain stuff. Some self imbues, um, a clash only skill, uh, a worse than Kaito and Rick's um, cooldown break, and then some Magnuses that are worse than every other breaker out there, every other modern breaker out there. We're just we're just we're just worse. We're worse. Not to mention these 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 breaks don't even have the imperils attached to them. Doesn't even have the imperil like all the other ones, like you know Laguna, Tulian, Emperor, etc. All of them have their elemental imperil attached to it on top of everything. Where even is her dark imperil? My lord, we love this, don't we? So 140 up here, but we don't have the good one attached to the mag. What, what is going on here? So we're, we're gonna come back to the passives in a minute. We're gonna come back to the clash stuff in a minute. Let's go to the LB. So you might have been wondering where's her field. Yet again, we have to make things awkward and horrible. So her field is only on the regular limit burst, and this is an SLB unit. Are you, are you putting pieces together? Why this is a tremendously bad problem? It's only on her LB. She's an SLB unit. On top of this, on top of this, you, let's go through her kit again. Where's like a cooldown or something to fill her LB gauge? She doesn't have it. She has literally nothing in her kit to fill her LB gauge. Now, to be fair, she does fill it at EX2 on turn one, but um, to fill her LB gauge. So how many of you have done the current Dark Visions? Um, Anima, Final Fantasy 13, Vision World Final Boss. Remember the boss that puts up fields, like, all the time? Uh, bosses in the future use fields as well. So our favorite boss, Anima, is going to put up the field on turn two, the, the enemy side field, that you want to remove on turn three. The only way that Ella Spears can remove that field is by doing her normal limit burst. So first of all, if you went to EX3 on your Ella Spears, she literally cannot even remove the field because her SLB will replace her limit burst and she doesn't have access to her field anymore. So Anima is going to put up that field on turn two. On turn three, it's time for you to remove the field, but her LB is gone. The SLB has replaced it. So you can use the SLB and then on turn four, well, we can't burst with her anymore because on turn four, you used her LB to put her SLB, I'm sorry, used her SLB. So now you have to entrust her somehow on turn four because for one thing, she doesn't even have a way to fill her LB gauge. So even, even if you want to do a turn five kill, you still got to entrust her because she has not, no way to fill her LB gauge to get, get it ready again. So you've got to entrust her, which is fun. And then you've got to use her 
LB on turn four or turn five to remove the field, to put the field back up. So what kind of awkward stupidity is this? Why would they only put the field on the limit burst? This is like, at this point, I'm almost wishing they would have just copied a JP unit like Kier. Like, at the, as, as much as Kier wasn't a good unit, at the very least, his kit was like sort of sort of cohesive. It was bad, but at least it didn't have this kind of goofiness. Why would you only put this on the limit burst? Why would you put it on the limit burst in the first freaking place? Didn't we learn our lesson with Esther? If you want to put a field on a unit to be useful, do it like Nora. Nora has a wonderful field. We just had Nora, the global, the global exclusive, what, three months ago? Nora's field is amazing. It's on a multicastable ability. Again, Kier's field is not multicastable, but it's still on an ability on demand, not a cooldown. You can use Nora's field whenever the hell you want. And it's included in her multicast. It's so easy and so good and so smooth to use. Not Ella Spears. Not to mention Ella Spears' field is only for one element. If you watched my breaker video, not, not long, yesterday in fact, I showed you that pretty much every single breaker going forward has multiple elements in their field. Ella Spears is only one element and it's on the freaking limit burst which gets replaced and becomes unavailable when the SLB becomes ready. Who comes up with this kind of stuff? Who, do, who even thinks of this? That's so dumb. Why wouldn't you put this just like Nora on an, you know, an available skill? Or even something like freaking Tsukiko Put it on a, if you think it's so overpowered like Nora, put it on a Magnus in the base kit. You can leave it on the LB for flexibility. That's fine. But give us another source like in the normal freaking kit. But no. Anyway, and then her SLB is, for some reason, you know, we do we this from the live stream. I didn't really bring it up. But her LB, her SLB, I'm sorry, is only 88% break. Why, why is it only 88% on the SLB? Because like all the other breakers going forward have the 89 on the SLB. So even the old breakers, like tooling and stuff, they have 89s on their SLB. Like I, if you didn't want her to be 89, 89 on the SLB, like pretty much every breaker going forward, then at the very least do 89, 88, you know, 89 defense, 88 spirit, kind of like, you know, all the months and months old breakers like Vaughn, Gilgamesh, Etc. Even the crown breakers like, um, oh god, what's his name? Uh, Emperor, Emperor Kuja, etc. Actually, Kuja is on a cooldown, not on an LB. But you get you get the idea. Like, why is it only eighty eight percent? And then here's the dark and peril one sixty on the SLB, which is nice. And then the damage, that damage. Oh my god. So we thought maybe uh, Ella Spiris was going to have modifier boost in her kit. That didn't happen. Oh no. Oh no. Her damage is some of the worst in the entire game. So before we look at the... Let's go ahead and look at the damage. So let's look at the damage in Clash of Wills. In Clash of Wills, her damage is basically worse than Wilk. Worse than Wilk. That is saying something. As much as we've been making fun of Wilk's damage for a year and a half, Ella Spiris' damage is worse than Wilk. In Clash of Wills, and that's with a 900% leader skill, which Wilk doesn't even freaking have. 900% leader skill, and her damage is literally bottom of the barrel in Clash of Wills. Let's pop over to Dark Visions. It's even worse in Dark Visions. I think Vanille will outdamage this girl in Dark Visions. I don't know, I didn't calculate Vanille because her damage is real bad, but her damage, Ella Spiris, and Dark Visions is so bad 250 limit burst what is even going on and that's assuming she's on lightning's party and dark visions which is in in all reality is not going to happen she's not going to be on lightning's party because she only breaks dark there's no reason you'd bring her for the damage so you're not putting her on lightning so actually it's going to be even worse because best case scenario she's on either a party with rain 
or Ibarra or Deoxys. And, like... She's only going to have a 500 liter. But I'm being generous and giving her the 750 liter skill for calculations and dark visions. Literally worse than Tulian. Worse than Diverti. Worse than, like, Vacation Fina. And this is assuming you're even giving her a 100 amplify, which most teams can't really do. And I'm, just for the sake of trying to be as fair as possible, I'm assuming she's using Rick's card. The best card available to her. So, like, that's, that's assuming an external... 100 amplified just to try to make her look better than she is and even with me going giving her all the extra benefit of the doubts her damage is that low in uh dark visions like tulian is better than her and that is just also by the way this is just me assuming that she can cap her killers i didn't even calculate if she can cap her kill. I just, I just gave her max killers. You know, once the builder's updated, I'll go ahead and do a proper build. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just slapped max killers on her. Uh, and we're, as we're going to see in a second, her gearing is pretty terrible on top of this. So, honestly speaking, she's probably not going to be max killers. So, this is fun. Let's go to her passive stats, which are, again, a problem. So, at EX2, you get 5 points of attack power, and she auto-casts Shadowy Temptress. Start of the battle, fills her LB gauge, and auto-breaks for only one turn. Only one turn. Why is it only one turn? Like, they just... Why? Why? Like, all the other breakers with preemptive breaks, they do it for, like, four turns or something. Why is hers only one turn? Why? But anyway, there it is. So, at EX3, you get 1,000 attack power and HP, and she auto cast every turn Beguiling Beauty, which is a morale fill, and 40% physical mid for herself. Yay, morale fill, 500 a turn for free. That's nice. At EX3, she will help you fill morale a little bit. She's got um, the rest of her stats, uh, some, you know, 300 double hand, a lot of attack power percent, um, you know, defense spirit, HP, no MP passives whatsoever. Not even an EX3. You know, Elena had the same problem. And you remember Elena ran out of mana, like, instantly. Um, that being said, she doesn't really use much mana, as you can see. Actually, she uses basically no mana. So, okay, so this is not, not that big a deal. She doesn't have any MP passives. Does she at least have MP regen? Um, you know, I'm not seeing any MP regen whatsoever. But that being said, like I said, she only uses... The only thing that even costs MP is the two cooldowns. So once per five turns, you're using 80. That's not rest. Uh, that's honestly not a problem. So whatever. She, she uses uh, health as her resource. So, but anyway, doesn't have MP. Um, you know, she she does some some self buffs, 350 attack power, etc. She has some self killers, 250% uh, when she gets below 75 or 85% health. She has self regen. That's all kind of neat and all. 50% evasion, um, 150 LB damage. Her normal attack is uh, a perfect dispel. Same thing as Kaito. Same thing as Rick. Same thing as Olive. Like, basically, tons of global exclusives have uh, perfect dispel as an auto attack. Same thing as, like, you know, Dinah, Cyan, Ash, etc. And then some Clashing World stuff. And then she has Killers, too. Six of the races at 200%. And then she has Guts, um, two stack. You know what's missing in this kit on top of other things? Do you see it? Do you see it yet? What, what What's missing here? What is missing that has been on every single unit, even support units like Breakers, going back two and a half years? A source of the chain cap. She has none. No chain cap whatsoever. We are going back three years to the Cloud Remake days where units have no chain cap at all. So yes, I do realize that her STMR does have it on there. So you're going to have to give her her own STMR, and you're going to have to give her a Magister's gear on top of that. Or you're going to have to waste two slots using her STMR and save your STMR. She has no chain cap whatsoever. Even the non-damage dealing stupid units like Vanille have a chain cap increase. Ella Spiris doesn't. Oh no. None. Now her Clash of Wills skills. 
in Clash of Wills only. One use per battle. 50 Katana in peril. That is our highest in the game. Keep that in mind. And then 40% for... I assume the rest of the rest of the the rest of the weapon that I didn't count them. It looks like all of them. So there you go. Once per fight, um, big katana in peril, decent weapon in peril, and then it auto cast for the rest of the battle a thirty percent um, every turn, which is nice. I'm gonna assume right here that the clash of wills we're about to get tomorrow is probably gonna self dispel pretty often because they're gonna try to force you to pull this dumb unit. But um, that's my assumption. I don't you know. I don't know yet. Um, Clash of Wills, 10 turn cooldown, we knew, we knew this from the live stream, 90 break, um, you know, big imperils, etc. Uh, partial uptime. And then also she has the uh, same thing as uh, Melissa, where she can uh, reduce uh, healing from the enemy one time per fight. It also has the same thing as Kaito, where it reduces uh, buff duration. So there you go, same thing as Kaito, same thing as Rikt, etc. And that's... That's the unit. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm being too harsh on her. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm being too harsh on her. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. I I was really looking forward to this unit. You know, I figured because she's a fan, she's a fan winner, we'd be getting great. Like, we just had Malfazy, another fan design contest winner. I think Malfazy is phenomenal. I pulled her and I have her EX3 now. I am very happy with Malfazy. I loved her. I was looking forward to Ella Spiris. I was thinking she's got to be on Malfazy's tier. Nope. Nope. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. So, yeah. So for me, as, oh, 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 and by the way, by the way, by the way, last thing, last thing. Her vision card, her vision card. The mitigation is 30%, but they put a short duration on it. Why do they do this? All the other auto mitigations in the game are permanent duration. If you're using Renora's uniform, if you're using the fiendish, the fiendish clothing, if you're using... Um, I, I'm not, I, I probably can't think of all of them off the top of my head. But uh, what's it called? The Behemoth suit from the Behemoth trial with the, the auto beast mitigation. Um, all the auto racial mitigations are permanent duration. I've actually, actually got them over here on my sheet right here. Um, where is it? Oh, yeah. My spreadsheet has everything. So racial mitigation. Here we go. So racial mitigation. Cozy scarf, 20%. Permanent duration to stone. Reaper killer. Blessed warrior's robes, 15%. Permanent duration. Renora's uniform, 10%. Permanent duration. Hum human mitigation. Human mitigation. Dragon mitigation. The cloak. Permanent duration. Uh, beast mitigation from the suit, aquatic from the anti, all of this is permanent duration mitigation. Not Ellis Pierce's vision card, only for five turns, and you can't refresh it. You can't refresh it. Five turns, then it's gone. Then it's gone because they just they, they, they it's, it's, it's like it's like it's like they made a good unit, and then they went through piece by piece, and they decided. We've got to make every single individual thing of her kit slightly worse than the standard. Like her amplify, you know, all the other breakers have a, all the other good breakers have a 150 amplify. Not Ellis Spiris, we only have 50. All the other units in the game basically have a chain cap up. Not Ellis Spiris, all the other breakers with a breaker magnus have a three turn duration. Not Ellis Spiris. Only like, it's like every single turn, er, every single thing, they just took it and made it worse than the standard. Like same same thing right here. Like this is you know the 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 the, the Kaito cooldown, the Rikt cooldown. Let's give Ellis Spiris a version that doesn't dispel on the future turns, the same way as all the other ones do. Like why is every single every single thing in your kit just worse? Than what we've had before. It's like they it's like they just don't they don't want to sell you global exclusives anymore. I don't even get it. Maybe this is their thing. You know, you know the global team has been cutting cost all across the board. They cut content. They cut translations. You know, hold, hold, hold long press for full, full full description of your ability. They're just cutting cost across the board. Maybe they don't want to make global exclusive units anymore. So they're intentionally making them terrible. We just had a copy paste Kier, which was the lowest effort ever. But I think I think Kier is even better than freaking Elispirus. Now we have Elispirus who they just they just want 
I guess they want us to not like global exclusives anymore. And that way, if people don't like them anymore, they'll stop asking for them, they can stop creating them, and then they just have less work. So yet, yet another way to cut cost. They, it's, it really, it really, I'm, I'm, it's probably, it's probably not the case, but oh my God, does it feel that way? It feels like they don't want us to want global exclusive units anymore, because Kier, then followed by Ellis Spiris. What in the hell is going on on the global team? What is with these units and these terrible, terrible unit designs? Anyway, it, anyway, it's still early in maintenance. Maybe they're going to adjust her. Who knows? It's unlikely, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and skip this unit because hell to the no. <laughs> no, not pulling this. I will stick with Kaito. If Kaito doesn't work in Clash of Wills, too freaking bad. I won't get rank one. Either I, either I, either I will find a way to do it with a different unit or just no rank one for me this month. I don't care anymore. I don't care. I'm not pulling for this kind of stuff. You want good units? Like, we just had Malth... I'm, I'm not going to go over again. We just had Malthazy. Malthazy was top tier. I loved Malthazy. Wonderful unit. Happy to pull her. Got her to EX3. No regrets. Now we have Kier. Now we have Ellis Spiris. I guess August is just a throwaway month. Anyway, see you tomorrow for Clash of Wills. Let's hope we can rank one without this dumb unit. See you then.